So I'm going back to the core of our topic based on the question that was asked of me. How does strategic leadership, uh, how does African maritime strategic leadership, how has it been able to build this Yaoundé architecture without, you know, it has been, it has been a little bit painful, we must recognize it, but have there been difficulties other than that, these are the talking points that were given to me, and I'm going to try and provide a response. No, just to set the scene. So piracy uh, began in this region around 2004. I hope you can still hear me. So piracy truly started in 2004. We had piracy attacks in Gabon. Uh, we had holdups in stores from people who came from the sea. And we saw this happening in Sao Tome as well. Cameroon underwent a lot of attacks uh, around 2007, 2008. Uh, there were holdups from people who came from the sea. Uh, Equatorial Guinea also had attacks. Uh, even uh, offices of the presidency were attacked. So this phenomenon became quite wide in scope. And so we had to react and find a solution. So we understood that Cameroon was undergoing a lot of attacks. And there was a council of ministers in Gabon, a meeting that took place. And there was a request from ACAS to set up a strategy to, in order to face this phenomenon in a sub-regional manner. This is how ACAS um, started working on this dossier in this case. And we started, it is a, an issue of vision. And but we didn't start with vision, in fact. We started a bit lower down. We decided that we needed to secure the vital interests that were there. And so we didn't have a true vision of the scope of this task. Because if we had had it, it is possible that as of now, we would have been able to fix all these problems that are still quite big. There are still some cases of piracy and some kidnappings of mariners. So but there was a lot of leadership demonstrated. A lot of things were accomplished. And it, it was impossible for one country to achieve this. You know, the sea is fluid. It doesn't have borders. Um, there were no, no borders. Boats go from one place to another. So we absolutely had to work together. What was the work that was done? Uh, first, we had to find partners, colleagues within the different countries that could speak the same language, that could understand the maritime language, because we must understand that, uh, you know, Africans have not always looked towards the sea. You know, so we needed uh, courageous people to go to the heads of state and make them understand that we had to react. You know, not just anyone gets up in the morning to go see a president and says, hey, look, we have to go to see because there are issues. You know, it's not really in our culture. It's not part of the African culture, but we absolutely had to do something. We had to find the words in order to speak to them. And especially from one country to another, we must find the individuals who speak the same language. And this is important. Then we had to talk to our partners. We had to find the right words to talk to the partners. We had to set up our concepts and interest the Americans. You know, and it's not always obvious to do this. Like uh, human connection. Uh, people talking to each other, even if they don't know each other. With Professor Malakias, I think uh, we met the, for the first time in uh, 2011 in Germany, and we've never stopped talking, never stopped writing to each other, developing concepts about this problem. And since then, we've had to find other people with whom to speak, and we have found them. Then we had to set up a strategy. But you don't just get up in the morning and come up with a strategy that appeals to a lot of countries. We had to find essentially the the 
place in the middle where each state could find an interest in what we were creating and writing. We had to please Angola and Cameroon. Uh, given the language barrier, it was not very easy. But what is important is that we set up uh, intermediaries. We found people with whom we went to war college, to the same military schools, and we started to build this network. And this was a an inclusive network, and we understood each other. And this is how leadership is so important. And I can say that that it is level. You know, I've taken leadership courses um, at the War College in Newport. And so we needed this flexibility, this, this, uh, in our minds to be able to speak to people in the highest ranks of government. Um, but what I said earlier, if you don't have a vision, you cannot achieve such an objective because you show up one morning and you see something, but you don't know what's behind it. And then you sort of lose your footing and you're discouraged. But when we started to list the interest of the sea, we, we started to see other aspects that are linked. And we understood that we needed to go well beyond this. And this is the work that we did to go beyond our abilities, actually. So we had to think about bringing together the highest authorities and we brought together ministers in order to create zone d in 2009 and once again we found a favorable hearing because you had to have a vote from each country and essentially allocate it to another country so in zone d you know it's a very specific thing we made it possible to, uh, that our heads of state understood, accepted that a Cameroonian boat could come uh, to Gabonese waters under their flag and could navigate in um, Equatorial Guinea's waters. We were able to break those barriers. So we broke taboos, more or less. And then we were able to set up the zone because we found um, favor. Now, we explained many times that the sea was very important and this started to bear fruit. Then we realized that this was not sufficient. We could not divide the Gulf of Guinea from Cameroon all the way to Angola because pirates, as I said, they don't have maritime borders. So we absolutely had to get the support of Western and Central Africa. I remember at the time, the US, for them, the West African coast, that was West Africa. And the idea of West Africa and West and Central Africa, this was not a well-known concept. So we had to go back to the source so that our American counterparts could understand this, so that Afri Central Africa could be recognized as an entity in itself in cooperation with the U.S. And we were able to succeed in this. And this means that we were able to bring Central Africa and West Africa to work together under this partnership. And this is because there was this determination from the American partner because of this, this allowed us to bring everyone together. Now, we have to understand that Central Africa and Western Africa, these are there are some differences, but you needed leadership. You need to talk to friends of West Africa. We needed to explain the grounds under which, um, which meant that we needed to work together. There were meetings that led nowhere because we didn't properly understand each other that that happened but once again the determination from the US side they financed these meetings they paid so we explained to our American friends that we needed to start we begin again from zero from the start and these these are the aspects that you have to take into account when you're trying to achieve such a project and this is where we understood that the vision needed to be made clear to the heads of state because we understood that African presidents had never met about the oceans, about the sea. 
despite the the interest, the benefits that come from the sea, they had never met about this. And this is the first time that heads of state from Central and West Africa met around such an important topic, the sea. Because, uh, as we said, it, you know, the Gulf of Guinea cannot be developed without in uh, Central Africa, without the sea. So we had a number of obstacles. Unfortunately, when experts do not properly explain some concepts to the heads of states, we, we lose ground. I remember at the Yaoundé summit, there was a meeting, a closed door meeting with heads, heads of states from the nine communities and all the experts were kicked out. I had the, I was lucky enough to be in the room and we saw how the heads of state talked among each other in a frank manner and, and they began to arrive at solutions. During this Yaoundé summit, they asked to meet three times, at least once every three years, if not more. They, they wanted this. And I realized that since then, we have not been able to get the heads of state together. And so we have met dif with difficulties because the funds were not properly um, mobilized. The architecture is what it is. It is progressing, but it's still an issue. Uh, you know, with leadership, we, we understand that sometimes we're not understood. What other problems have we had? We've had the financing issue internally between ourselves. Zone D um, encountered a lot of problems because of the states self-financed, but it didn't move forward. You know, the zone didn't, shouldn't stop there. It should go over that. So the we didn't have the full financing that we needed, unfortunately. And once again, we have to start from the start from the very bottom and rebuild. We need strategic leaders. We need people who don't lose courage, who know how to search forward, how to reconceptualize, how to create a concept and present it to the authorities, even if it takes time. It'll take the time that it takes, but we must continue forward. Unfortunately, those who are here sometimes don't have the wisdom to go back to those who have done the work previously. And yet this is very important because we must pass on the information, the knowledge, so that things can move forward from where we stopped. Um, I think this is pretty much the time that was given to me. But, but here is the importance, the interest in developing the strategic leadership that goes from the top to the bottom and the bottom towards the top and brings, creates a federation of states that speak different languages that may not have the same level of investments, but brings them together to establish long-term solutions because we cannot fix this issue without bringing the states together. So we need leaders, people who know how to speak with partners, understand the partners and you know, so that they understand what their benefit is from this. This is important. Thank you.